Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. Today I want to show you a way how you can give Collect All and Save the shortcut that it should have always had. Just a note, this tutorial is mostly about how to do it on a Mac. There are ways how you can achieve the same thing on Windows that I will get to at the end, but I cannot show you how it's done because I don't have a Windows computer, but I'm going to link the apps as well that allow for this to happen. So this isn't just for shortcuts for this collect all and save feature. You can use this for other things as well that have a menu entry in live, but not a shortcut assigned to them. So for example, let's have a look here. Like here we see We've got collect all and save, no shortcut. There's others as well. If you want, you can create shortcuts for them as well. I'll show you how it's all done. You can also create shortcuts for something like freeze and flatten track or the slice to new MIDI track, convert harmony to MIDI and so on and so forth. So everything that doesn't have a shortcut, you can create a shortcut for, except there's a few things that I noticed that when I tried to make them work, it didn't. And those are the things where it's just basically like an option to toggle something on and off that is not meant to be used as elsewhere. Like for example, this one will work. It has a shortcut. The same for like the mixer controls, this works. But for example, for something like rep key, board navigation, this doesn't work. Or things like here, the I tried to reduce latency when monitoring, it didn't work there. Okay, so let's get started how this works. So on the Mac, this is a built-in feature that you can access through the system settings or system preferences if you're on an older version still. Then you click on that and uh, then keyboard. By the way, depending on what Mac OS exactly you're using, this might look different because for me, this is Ventura and on my MacBook, I still have Monterey on and there it looks quite different. But if you just follow keyboard, then keyboard shortcuts and then app shortcuts, you can actually find it. So I've had added something already, but deleted it so I can show you all again. So we're gonna just click on the plus icon here. And then we have to first select the app. Here I've got Ableton Live 10, 11, 12 and 12 beta installed. And it just for some reason sees that all as Live 12 suite. And so I'm just gonna select it. But as you can see, if I select it again, they're all selected at once. So just do it for Live 12. And if you have the beta installed or Live 11 still on, the shortcuts should work as well. So then we have to add the menu title exactly how it's written. So for collect, all and save, we're gonna have to make sure that the end doesn't have a capital letter at the beginning because that's how it's written in the menu in life. And for example, if you wanted to use something with three dots, for example, that is something that you have as well in life, then you have to add the dots as well. So now we're gonna have to think of a shortcut that doesn't interfere with any other shortcuts. So for me, for example, that wouldn't just be the live shortcuts, but also another app that works globally. I've tried a couple of things. My recommendation, or what I find useful, is Control S because S is saving. And so this is easy to remember. And this is not connected to anything. Okay, now we click Done and it's added. And let's go back to live and just try it. And as you can see, it works. It opens up the window asking us where we want the files to save from. Then we just click OK, but uh, this is a new set, so it doesn't make sense. I'm going to click cancel. So there are quite a few other menu items in life that don't have shortcuts either. So if we just look through it here, like if you wanted to save live set as a template here, you can see the example with dots as well or default set this might be something or if you tend to add new folders to the browser on a fairly regular basis that might make sense as well and then something I definitely want to do is add, add a shortcut for freeze and flatten track because it's new can be really helpful no shortcut but we did get a shortcut for freeze track finally with live 12 but I found it really clunky. And so with this Mac feature, you can also change shortcuts. So if you don't like them, change them. The only thing is you cannot create single key 
shortcuts. So something like S for solo track, it's not something you can create. It always has to have a modifier key. And then something I would like to also use like for the audio to MIDI functions or at locator, because if I'm going through an arrangement to kind of see what things I have to do, I might just use the locators to add quick notes in what needs to be changed, like, you know, better automation or whatever. There's uh, quite a few other things as well, but one thing I want to highlight is here for the mixer controls. So with Life12, the, the whole setup, how the mixer controls work, were changed because they're now available in the arrangement view as well, which is great. But because of this reason, what used to be the mixer section shortcut here is now working for everything that is currently active. So also the in and out and sense and what used to be the mixer section is now called volume. And that doesn't have a shortcut, unfortunately, which has been really bugging me. And so this is something where I definitely want to add that. And this is also a great example for how this is done if you have a sub menu item. Right, so let's go back to the system settings. And at that, so I'm going to have to select Ableton Live again here. And then in this case, so from what I read online, it used to work differently. So I'm going to show you how it used to work first. So before you used to have to write down the parent menu, mixer controls, and then basically create an arrow with no spaces and then volume. But this is not how it works for me anymore on uh, both Ventura and Monterey. So now I only have to add volume and it will be recognized. Now we only need a shortcut for this. So since I want to go with how the other shortcuts in this section work, I'm going to choose Command, Option and V. And I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to go in here and now let's see. Now you see it works. We can independently hide the volume section as well and not just the whole thing if we, if we want to get rid of that. So one last example, let's say with three track, you also don't like the shortcut that we got, then you can simply choose another three track keyboard shortcut. I thought I'd just go with Control F here as well because it's pretty neat and following the same kind of logic always helps me to remember things. And so for example, if I go in here and then just press Control F, you can see the track is frozen. I'm actually going to create a screenshot of all the shortcuts that I've created and add a link so you can have a look at that to see if you find them useful as well for yourself, if you want to recreate the same thing, or they might serve you as inspiration for your own ideas of what you would like to create shortcuts for. Because everyone has a different workflow, and so if you work in a completely different way from me in life, which is possible, then shortcuts for other things will be likely more helpful now we can test a couple of things as well to see if everything works. So for example, I'm going to go to samples, loop, and just, just take a random audio loop here. And I can try the audio to MIDI functions. So slicing, so we have to have the clip selected, obviously. And then slicing was N, so that works. Harmony works to melody works as well and then to drums if we want to add a locator while it's running I could type something that works if I want to add it um, info text for example to take a note I could do this as well by clicking either on a track header that's what I usually do and now I could type something down here below as well and then, for example, if I play this here and I want to do a better arrangement, that works. MIDI arrangement overdub, which is this plus icon here, works as well. Those work as a toggle as well, if they're toggles. And then if I create a MIDI clip here, 
Here, this is the MIDI note editor preview. So if I do control P, you can see I can toggle this on and off as well. Okay, so if you're not on Mac, but on Windows, there are two options depending on what you're trying to achieve. If you want to create your own shortcuts for menu items in Live or other programs as well, then there is Auto Hotkey, which is free. You can simply download it. But as you can see, it already says the ultimate automation scripting language for Windows. You can do a lot more with this than creating shortcuts, but it requires some scripting. I've checked. There are some tutorials on YouTube for this that hopefully are helpful. I've looked at them at least once seemed helpful, but I couldn't try it out and just follow along. And then the other option, I'm going to link both in the description below, are the Microsoft Power Toys. They can simply be installed. They're from Microsoft and they allow a lot more than what you might need for this as well. So it might be interesting if you install them to just check what else you can do with them. You cannot create shortcuts with the Power Toys, but if you want to change a shortcut, say for the freeze track, then this is possible and it's very simple. Well, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.